Welcome to the Explore Composites Materials Library. This is laminate sample number 40. This is a grid of carbon tow with two very light plies of e-glass on either side. This is 4850K tow and the whole thing is vacuum infused. Here's a look at the glass. This is two ounce and this is the carbon tow. It is a 48K toe, which means there are 48,000 filaments of fiber in that bundle. And so to lay this out, I've made a grid slightly larger than my panel. This is just a little frame that is one foot square on the inside. And I've laid out the 25 millimeter spacings on the tape. And I'm going to use double stick to control the toes. And I this is just an experiment. I've never really done this before. It's sort of a test of the process and we'll see how it goes but I'm interested in trying to figure out how to make very light things so here's the glass this is that 70 gram or 2 ounce e-glass woven and I'm putting it down as neatly as I can trying to get the wrinkles out of it and just tacking the edge to the double sided tape and here's the first carbon toe going across I'm trying to keep it under some tension and do it as neatly as possible what I probably should have done is just cut a bunch to the right length instead of trying to loop them around like this. But I was trying to save myself trouble. But as always, you learn how to do it while you're doing it with stuff like this. And the biggest challenge here is trying to keep the toe from getting all fuzzy and or being really spread in some places, thin and flat, and in other places being all bunched up which will affect both the appearance and the thickness. And I'm using this masking tape just to support the ends, keep it from getting messed up in handling. And I'm just going to assume when I infuse it that it will fill underneath the tape, which it will. And here's the next layer. Because this is just stacked on top of each other, they're not woven. Uh, this is an asymmetrical laminate, so it will have some, some warpiness to it. Hopefully not that bad. Ideally, these would be woven. Effectively, that's what you get with a spread toe woven, where the, the, these toes would just be made into wider, flatter bits and woven, and that's spread toe fabric. You can see this example for spread toe. I'll put a card in here. They're pretty stable. The spacing it looks kind of ugly. Some of them are flat. Getting it right was a challenge. But I had to come back here and just cut off the tails to make room for the infusion stuff so they wouldn't hang out over the sealant tape. A little bit of spray tack. I'm going to try and get this top one down neatly, starting in the middle, just kind of working it out. I'm sure there's a better way to do this, but this, this worked okay. And now for the infusion stuff. Putting some peel ply so that it's in contact both with the bottom and the top of the tape. So the fibers underneath will allow air to escape out of the laminate into that MTI hose. You can see I put the flow media only part way through. And instead of using peel ply here, I used perforated release film. Got the resin inlet side here. It's just some spiral wrap covered in peel ply. I'm going to put down the sealant tape around everything. Sometimes it's nice to put the sealant tape down before you do the layup just to make sure there's no fibers stuck underneath going to put each hose up in a little pleat, preform the pleats, and my most common mistake, making the bag too small, I've done that trick again here. It's not going to be a catastrophe, but it is just a setback, makes things more complicated and uglier. Always better to have more bag, you make enough pleats. I was just trying to be cheap and get something out of half the roll with here. Got the bag pulled down. Got it down to about 2 millibar best. Didn't seem like it was leaking. Still a little ugly though around all those pleats. It should definitely have been about 200 millimeters bigger in each direction. It did come back to bite me a bit on that detail where the uh, vacuum side goes through. It's kind of ugly and bridgy there. And there's not enough slack on the inlet hose pleat. So that uh, the bag goes all the way around the hose. There's a bridgy area underneath. It'll end up filling with resin. Here is the infusion going. This is a ProSet infusion resin. And you can see one of the mistakes I made is that it's feeding only from the end of the spiral wrap. 
so it's working its way diagonally across the panel there uh, from that open end. I'm not sure why it's not coming out. The rest is a smaller diameter spiral wrap, but it's feeding fast enough with that flow media. This won't be a huge issue, but it's something to be mindful of if you're doing that, that the resin will follow the easiest path. And if that easiest path is not where you want it to be, sometimes that can be a problem. It's filling all of this really quickly and nicely, coming up to the end of the panel. Holding back the flow media like that is really important. It sort of provides a flow break and allows it to equalize before it reaches the end of the part. You can see it filling in those toes here. Sometimes toe is hard to infuse in big bundles, but here it's... Um, worked out pretty nicely. These are small enough that the resin just fills in if given enough time. Here I'm clamping it off and making sure everything is tidy, not any extra slack, extra excess resin around the feed line. So it'll end up filling more now that it's clamped off all the resin will equalize across the part and having that vacuum break between the end of the panel and the MTI hose which won't even get wet really will just help keep any excess resin from feeding out of the laminate. So it's better to clamp it off early. There you can see the perforated release film and the end of the flow media. And one mistake I made as this was done, I just walked away and forgot about the resin in the pot and it went hot potato and made bad smells. It's best not to do that. So I came back when it was cured. It looked really nice, pulled all the process stuff off. The release film made the flow media pop off really easily. Part looks really nice. There's no trapped air. Popped off really easily. It's relatively stiff for how thin it is. And in order to trim it up, I found I could just take scissors and cut through the, the base fiberglass very easily and also the toes relatively easily depending on how spread out they were. The infusion ended up filling everything really nicely. Just took a little bit of time. So I weighed it up, the one foot square panel is 65 grams or 2.3 ounces, which is pretty light. And the, just the glass is 0.2 millimeters thick and across two toes relatively thick, about 1.4 millimeters. So here's the finished panel. It's pretty neat stuff. It's a lot stiffer than you think it would be because the toes are actually relatively thick. You can see the Asymmetry there caused it to be a little bit warped. Flow media definitely pressed in and printed where it was covering, uh, which is not ideal. It's an interesting way to lay up a panel. It's sort of inspired by load path tapes used on modern boat sails, which are oriented in the direction of the load in an actual laminate, pretty similar to this. There are a lot of things you could do with it and it's just neat to see how the process works, but this is definitely a first try. Comparison with two other laminate samples that are similar weights. This one just two plies of carbon 200 gram, and this is two 200 gram prepreg plies on either side of some very thin Nomex honeycomb core. These both are both a little bit heavier than this toe grid panel, but this one is quite stiffer because of the core, but also probably much more prone to damage. These are some of the offcuts to show how relatively stiff it is. And you can see some varying stiffness there from depending on how wide the toe is, where the toe is thin and therefore fatter top to bottom the panel is stiffer and where it's more spread out, the panel is thinner. And without the carbon reinforcement, just those two plies of 70 gram cloth are really flexible. So it's neat to see those two materials working together. Thanks for checking it out. Have a look at explorecomposites.com for more practical how-to composite stuff.